We spoke last week about the four facets and the four living creatures before the throne of God. We spoke about the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. And day and night, day and night, day and night, crying out, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and needs to come. And every time then the 24 elders fall before the throne, put their crowns before the throne and worship the Lord. And in the word holy, we said that holy doesn't mean, first of all, don't be naughty, do the right thing. But in the word holy is the awesome, awesome, uncomparable greatness and beauty and majesty of God. And that when God says he wants you to live holy, he wants you to live a life that you cannot compare with any other life. When we live in the flesh, when we live and just think about a lot of rubbish and treat one another in a very rubbish way, there's no holy life. And it's not about now we must just do the right thing. It's to be separated for him and him alone. But as you say, God, you are holy, you're saying, I cannot compare you with anything else. And if you live with Christ, more and more you will come into a life where you will say, there is no other life that I will desire except this life with you, Lord. And this life that I can have with you, I cannot compare it with any other life. And when you get into that place, you start to live a holy life. You start to understand holiness and the uniqueness that God has called you. To have and to be. But to stand out and to be unique and not compare yourself even to the world. We say in these four creatures before the throne of God, I find a balance. Remember we spoke about that? You find a balance. We said Luke 2 verse 52, you remember that one? Jesus grew in stature, in wisdom, favor with God, favor with man. Those four facets. And in those four facets, we even see the four living creatures before the throne that Jesus grew in all those four facets. The lion that talks about authority and the word says Jesus grew in stature. He grew in wisdom and the picture of the ox that talks about practically understand how to put things on the ground, how to take something and put it on the ground. Hello? That it can work. We see, he grew in favor with God, favor with man. Favor with man, we see the picture of the face of the man. Hello? And number four, the picture of the eagle. Oh, there's somebody preaching with me, it seems to me. The picture of the eagle, that has to do with favor with God, that I can grow in accuracy. Amen. Then we saw that even with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. With Matthew, talks about the authority of God, and we said the name Breakthrough Authority. You remember Breakthrough Authority? That God is giving you Breakthrough Authority, and in that authority, wherever you go, you go in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, there's not just authority, but there's safety. The righteous run into the name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Amen. You with me? Breakthrough authority. The second one, the ox, we talked about you to be practically effective. And say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not a people person. I'm just a very practical person. Okay, you have that type of personality and skill. And God will use you in a very unique way. But if Christ is living through you, all four facets will come through. All four facets about leadership, about servanthood, about understanding how to be a human being, but also how to be a spiritual being. All four facets will come through if you allow Christ to, hello, to live through you. As Yelamid May, you are still here. So those four facets... 
breakthrough authority, practical effectivity with human beings, you will have a relational capacity. Relational capacity. And relational capacity in such a way that people will not just drain me. Because that's when I'm in performance towards people. No. God is excited about people. And if I allow him to live through me, that excitement will be seen. And I will appreciate people as I appreciate even my own life. Amen? Human being and then the eagle. Spiritual accuracy. There's a spiritual accuracy God wants to give you so that you can understand when you're flirting with darkness, flirting with a girl, flirting with a guy, you can understand you are flirting with demons. You have the spiritual accuracy that you don't jump off the cliff like an ostrich and try to fly into a lot of rubbish. But that you will be able, as an eagle, to understand the wind. Hello? And you can see, hey, I'm getting in this type of relationship. I'm first having then the relationship with a demon of lust before I have a relationship with this lady. Before you have this relationship with that guy, you have the relationship with the demon of lust. Oh, man, for what? Why? No, we can have holy lives. We can have a life that is set apart for him alone. We can have lives that has beautiful, eternal value. Amen. The four facets. But I'm quickly going to go to Zechariah 6, if you can go with me. I'm going to give you one verse. Zechariah, the prophet. In the Old Testament, Zechariah 6, verse 12. Tell him this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man. Here is the man. Man, capital letter, Jesus Christ. Here is the man whose name is the branch. And he will branch out from his place. From where will he come? From the heart of the Father. But from that place he will come. And he will build the temple of the Lord. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord. And he will be clothed with majesty. God's splendor and God's beauty. And will sit and rule on his throne. And he will be a priest on his throne. And there will be harmony between the two. He will sit and rule as a king, but he will sit also as a priest. Remember we talked about that? Authority and intimacy. You are called as a kingdom of priests. Remember? Here again, Zechariah, talking about Jesus Christ, the man. And he will rule and he will be a priest. A priest on the throne, because as intercessor, he will stand for us. When we call his name, he will call our name before the Father. And through Jesus Christ, that intercession will be there. I'm asking you, let Jesus Christ be the man in your life. Amen? Now, from the Amplified, we see four facets where it says, here is the man. He says, behold the man. And I want you to write that down, please. Behold the man. Watch the man. So it's behold the man, watch the man, look at the man, and keep in sight the man. Seems to me Sanele will get it from his wife. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Great. <laughs> so, these four facets, amazing. First of all, I want to say, behold the man, my brother, my sister, doesn't matter your circumstance, doesn't matter what you go through. God says, first of all, to behold him, to be captivated by him, to wow about him. That's all about worship. First of all, you are called to be a worshiper in spirit and truth. Not behold and wow when I understand God. But in spite of if I understand him or not, that I will behold him. If you're going through a turmoil, through turmoil, and you cannot see, you cannot see, you cannot see God in your circumstance. You, there's a lot of stuff that you think that you cannot understand, you cannot see. 
in spite of not understanding, in spite of stress, in spite of fear, in spite of uh, success or failure, in spite of it, choose to be held by faith. We find the man Job, and he had a lot of, lot of things that he went through. We see in the book of Job, a lot of stress and a lot of things that he couldn't understand. And for chapter after chapter, lady, he says, Ah, oh, why I was born? I don't know. I had to die in my mother's womb. That will make more sense. To that point that the wife says, Just curse God and die. So he went into a turmoil. And after everything and nothing worked, you find this young prophet, he came to him and said, I'm... I'm I'm reluctant, I'm careful to speak to you because you're an older man. I saw the men, the older men that had to have wisdom and that you also as an older man supposed to have wisdom, but bear with me if I speak to you what I believe God is saying. And this man doesn't come with a lot of answers. To Job about all his questions about God and why this happened and why that happened and I don't understand how God is working. He first of all says, Job be still and behold the wonders of God. He, he challenges Job not first of all to understand. He doesn't give him an understanding. He gives him a command as a solution for his life. The reason why you are here is because you need to behold him. You need to worship your God. If you understand him or not. If you start to live according to the purpose why you were created, and that is to worship your God, the rest will start to fall in place. The rest will start to fall in place. But God is jealous for your attention. That's why the first commandment, you will have no other God before me. It will be me and me alone. And second one, you will love me and worship me. Before you talk further detail, I must be the one alone. And you need to worship and love me. That's the essence for your life. Let's start at that point. Behold the man. Amen. You make that choice that, that doesn't matter what you go through, that you will know from your spirit there's a hunger to worship Him. Your soul can be in a, in a tantrum, in a turmoil. In your soul you can have your emotions up and down and this and this and mindsets and offenses and opinions and whatever rubbish can come in your soul. can come in the baboon also, but only a man can have more rubbish than the baboon even. But from your spirit, your spirit is hungry to worship the Lord. There's a hunger in your spirit to connect with the Holy Spirit. There's a hunger in your spirit to wow about who God is. Your spirit wants to behold the one. Allow your spirit. Don't, don't suffocate the real you in you with your soul with your emotions, with your opinions, with your personality. Don't let it suffocate in there. You with me? Amen. Behold. If we talk about the four living creatures, we talk about behold, we're talking about the eagle, we're talking about the spirit man, we're talking about spiritual accuracy. The four facets the four living creatures before the throne of God. Remember the lion, the ox, the man, the eagle. The eagle that has to do with who is God. Spiritual context. You as a spiritual being. You want to start to make sense of your life. What your life is all about. Start in the right place. And that is you're a spirit being. And as a spirit man, start to worship God in the spirit. Amen. Behold the man. Don't live like baboon. Be the human being God has called you to be and worship your God. Spiritual accuracy starts with worship. Where you worship by faith. By faith means I don't feel like it. I don't see it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. But by faith God is pleased. By faith, God is honored. By faith, you overcome the world. By faith, you are saved. By faith, you will go as the righteous. 
The righteous will walk by faith. Righteous means the person that has the right to come before the Lord. The person that has a right standing with God. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. That's the eagle. You start to worship him, you will become spiritually accurate. You will be able to see in the spirit more and more and more and more and more. Second one, watch. Tell your neighbor, watch. What are we talking about? In the, in the context, it's about giving, give attention. But it has to do with authority. We're talking about the lion. Talking about the lion. Watch is that sudden strict attention that you give. But in that, even with authority, there's protection. Watch out. Oh, somebody is watching me because I could be in trouble. No. Watch that you don't fall. Watch that you don't get into temptation. Watch out. Why do you, why do you tell the child, watch out there? So that you don't run into the street and uh, you are run over by a vehicle, by a car. Hello. So that watch has to do with uh, authority many times through the prophets. God would say, watch. Give your attention. It's authority speaking. There's a man of authority speaking. So watch. Are you with me? And when I start to worship God and behold him, I get the spiritual sensitivity so that I can come into a place of breakthrough. Why? Because suddenly I just know I must not go here. I must do this. And when you develop that facet in your life, you have authority. You have authority because suddenly you just know, I mustn't do this. When I started with Kriari, me and secretary and I can't remember. We... We drove from Potsdam to Bluefontein, and suddenly I just felt when I wanted to pass a car uh, at 1.20, 1.30, somewhere there, and uh, I just felt no. But I mean, on the open road, and I felt go slower, slower, and I went off to 60. I remember she was looking at me on the open road, went 60, and as I went below 60, boom, the front tire burst, just just parked next to the road and without telling one another we just went got out of the car and started to worship god couldn't believe just at that moment watch so many times we fall in things why did this happen why did this happen we didn't watch what god at that moment just wanted to say as the voice of authority say don't hello at that moment, just suddenly, just, no, slag off. Why? At university, driving underneath, uh, through, under the bridge, where the library and the university, you know, where that is. And as I went underneath, through, normally, traditionally, we pray on the N1 for protection when we go to Cape Town or Joburg or wherever, in the car, as a family. But just I felt suddenly to pray. Just there. And I prayed for protection. And when I was finished praying, I thought, why? Why I prayed now? 100 meters further, we got into the place of getting into Nelson Mandela. And an older guy just bashed into me. And the truck was passing. And when we stopped, my hands were like this on the steering wheel. And instead of the car going in front of the truck like this, the car just went this. Just did this. Uh, hello. Prayer, it seems to me, is important. That the Holy Spirit felt that I must pray one minute before the accident. So many times with that watch, with that authority, when the lion of Judah wants to speak to you and you need to give that strict attention of now. It 
could protect a lot and not later thinking, why did I go through this? Why did God not protect? Why did... Many times. And you know with your conscience, sometimes it just happens. And you know, I mustn't do this. Sometimes it's longer, but just stay with what God is saying. Maybe some of you guys know this one also. Once we went uh, for ministry and um, driving on the N1. And for the first time ever in my life, as we went from Bluefontein, I just felt I was praying in tongues. And uh, the rest of the family were like, you know, on phones and this and that. And, that. and so I was just praying in tongues. Not just normal praying in tongues. And... Um, for two hours, and going beyond two hours, they passed Kulsberg, going to the next town, and I told my wife, I don't know why, but I just felt I must pray in tongues. And we got to this one town, and drove past the township, and there was this guy throwing stones at the cars, and at the trucks, and there were a lot of big stones in the, over the, the road, and uh, you could see places where tires were burned that were taken away, but still, there's no police. And these guys are standing and throwing at the trucks. And we're coming here, and a guy bringing this bob wire or whatever, just over the, over the road, that big rolls of wire. Huh? What's that? Bob wire. Okay. That bob wire. <laughs> and you know when you get into that, some of you guys maybe know about that type of thing. And we just said, whoa, what's happening here? And some trucks came a little bit slow, but there's no way through. These stones, too, they are too big. And at one moment, just one truck decided he's not going to take it. And he just ran, he just moved over everything. And he took that bulb wire with right through and I was still praying in tongues and I said God what must I do and I just felt I must go this side you know it's like a video game you know and so at a quite a speed just went off the road on this side of the tracks with the guys were throwing stones this side through and on the other side through this through this through this through that through that and phew, gone it was quite an experience but amazing, amazing. Watch. Immediately start to pray in tongues. When going out of Bluefontein. For some reason, it's not a theological discussion and maybe a good opinion to pray. You know, in principle, it's a very good uh, thing to pray. But why would Holy Spirit ask me to pray in tongues for three hours, for the first time in my life, so much, so long, in a car, before, after three hours, we get into this situation. Because he's arranging the, the angels. He's arranging the guidance. He's arranging that everything will become a testimony. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for you good. It will become a testimony. But you need to watch. Watch the man. Allow him to have the final authority that any time of the day, any time of the night, you will just respond immediately. And that's a man or woman that will have breakthrough authority. Authority to break through in that situation and not become a victim of the circumstance. Are you with me? Behold the man. Worship. Watch the man. Breakthrough authority when the Lion of Judah speaks. Are you with me? Look at the man. That's the third one. He said, you notice him. You can say like that. Notice him. Look at the man. What are we talking about? The third, the third living creature before the throne is the face of a man. Look at the man. You know, when we can become so busy with the studies or the work and all the stuff, we can get so drained even by people and with people. But in a very simple way, wherever you are, look at the man. Look at the Christ in that person. 
Don't look at the issue about the person or the, what the person did to you or didn't do to you. Then you will have relational capacity when you can, in a, in a way of contentment, in a way of just having peace, can look at Jesus among the people. That you can look at yourself in the mirror and that you say, I can see Jesus. Oh, you cannot you go by faith. You know you accepted Christ and then you speak it. I will be able to see Jesus. And you tell yourself that. But you need to look at yourself and not just see the mistakes because otherwise you're under a spirit of condemnation. And that spirit of condemnation, he, you look through those eyes at yourself. No. No. How do you look at yourself? You are precious in Christ. Now point at yourself in the mirror and say you are precious. Let's say I'm precious. Okay, let's try and say that everybody. Hello. Good morning. I am precious. I am precious. Whoa. Okay. May God help you. That we will understand how to look at him. And that look at him is just in a place of peace looking at something. Are, are you with me? Sometimes you can look at something and you are like lost in it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Maybe more men, you know, they say you go in your nothing box. So I don't know what they call it. But it's like, hello, wake up, wake up, you know. But now in that sense, you must be able from a place of peace just to look at him. And then you will not be drained. You will have relational capacity. Amen. The last one, keep in sight. Keep in sight. And with that, we can say focus. Keep in sight. Now the last one before the throne, that increases the ox. Talk about that, and that is about practical effectivity. Keep in sight. So, my brother, you are working, you are working, you are working. You have no time for this, no time for that, no time for that. You are working, and you are destroying your life. If you cannot keep in sight, where is God working? You need to work with God. You need to work for God, but also with God. So, you say what you do, you do it as if unto the Lord, but you're not also, you need to work with Him also. So there's a lot of need out there. There's a lot of opportunity. Hello. But only certain opportunity is from God. Hello. The devil can also open doors, but there's only one door of the sheep, Jesus Christ. So opportunity can destroy you. The needs out there can destroy you when you want to help others as if helping Jesus. But you can totally destroy yourself. Bible says, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, not destroy yourself. Religion will destroy yourself. Stress will destroy yourself. The needs will destroy you. The opportunities will destroy you. Your capacity up here will destroy you. Your gifting will destroy you. Your, your skills will destroy you if you don't keep him in sight. Because then, with what you have, you do it only where he is doing. Where he's working, you're working. Jesus says, if I don't see the Father doing it, I'm not doing it. I'm only doing what the Father is doing. Now, how is the Father there in heaven praying for the sick? There's no sick in heaven. I only do what I see my Father do. I see in his heart. That is what he wants to do. And me with him and him through me. And me as an ambassador to him. From, from him. We are doing this. Are you with me? And healing the sick. He says, I don't say anything unless I hear the Father say. So when Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. It's not like he saw the Father angry at the people. He saw a Father who forgives the ones, those who is slaughtering, who is killing his son. He saw a Father with forgiveness. And he just voiced what they saw. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Are you with me? 
Man, oh man. And so, as the picture of the ox, the ox is just working, 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 with the eyes there. No, the ox is also before the throne, looking at him, and saying, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. That in your work, you're not so busy, so stressed, so tired, so busy, that you cannot keep him in sight. You cannot keep him in sight with your work. Your work is a curse. You're under slavery. And that slavery is from the devil. Why you put yourself under that type of slavery? Be set free in Jesus' name. But say, Holy Spirit, help me then to keep God in sight. Behold the man. Watch the man. Authority. Hello? Look at the man among the people. And keep him in sight when you're working, when you feel you're going to get stressed out or anxiety or the fear of the, that, or you're just tired in your work. The pressure, the, the, the things that must be finished in certain, within a certain time. Keep in sight the man. Keep him in sight and you will have the breakthrough. You will have the breakthrough. You will have the spiritual accuracy. You will have the relational capacity. You will be practically effective in what you do. Because some people, they are doing something, but what they do in two hours, others do in two weeks, and not even, maybe two months. Because God will anoint you. The anointing will be there. God will provide. Where he guides, he will provide. But that is if you can keep him in sight. Thank you, Lord, that you come and change our lives. God, I pray that you will touch every man, every woman in this place. God, I pray that you will set us free from the curse of slavery, of being busy with a lot of stuff and a lot of things, and we say we're doing it for you, but we are not keeping you in sight about where you are working. We want to work where you work. There, yes, Lord, we want to do it as if unto you, but we cannot do it without you. Even when we do it for you, Lord. Come and help us, Lord, through your spirit. And I pray that it doesn't matter the circumstances that we're going through, that stress or fear or, or troubles or success or whatever will not take our focus away to behold you. Forgive us for f first trying to understand things before we will give ourselves to worship you doesn't matter what we feel we will come into a, a lifestyle to worship you in spirit and truth as our spirit is hungry to worship you you and you alone we will behold the man we will respect you and therefore we will watch you for every sudden move every every moment of warning or command given, where we will not reason about it, but just respond with obedience. Teach us such a lifestyle through the fear of God on our lives, Lord, please. Help us in our relational capacity that we will be able to appreciate people, to enjoy people, but even appreciate our own lives that you've given us. And value it in the right way by looking at who you are among the people. But help us, Lord, by your grace to keep you in sight. That our work as an ox, as a servant, will not be in vain. Thank you, Father, that you set us free. Set us free to come into that place of being true ambassadors of Christ. As through your spirit we choose to grow in stature, wisdom, favor with man and favor with you, Lord. Your grace on our lives. So we pray. As all say, Amen, Amen. Let it be so.